Hello, everyone, and welcome to round two league card front nine action from the 2022 Waco Annual Charity Open. I am Jeremy Colling, joined by my good buddy, Paul Uliberry. How you doing, man? It's good to be here. And uh -huh. I got a challenge for you viewers out there. Tell us. Well, our record for subscribers in one sitting yep. is 9,000. I think we can beat that with this video. I challenge you to hit that subscribe button. Let's get the job done. I, it doesn't hurt you guys. It only helps us. So go ahead and pause this, hit that button, subscribe to us. It helps so much. Thank you. Paul Macbeth, eight under in the first round. He played in the thick of the wind. Impressive round. Luke Humphreys, this dude is out here on tour saying, I belong. Fourth place at Vegas and leading the tournament or tied for the lead at eight under as well. 100% C2 putts in 50 mile an hour wins. Are you kidding me? I don't believe that stat. This is going to be a very special day for this man right here. Nick Carl, one of Macbeth's best buddies, and he is playing on lead card with him, also leading the field at eight under and two strokes back is one of the best players on the East Coast, technical magician, smooth ultimate player, Andrew Fish. It's going to be a delight to watch. Him. He doesn't go OB a lot. No, 0.00% is not a lot. On to hole one, much less wind, much more enjoyable, much warmer. This is like disc golf. We've got disc golf for you folks today. 291 feet. You see the two lines right there. It's going to be played by almost everyone, Up either the, the Heiser or Dead Beach, Straight. California, your pro leader at eight under par, Paul McBeth. They're all going to be taking high, stable fairway driver. Land it 20 feet short. Trickle it up there. Yep. Get yourself a bird and move on. And looks like Paul's going with that Captain Raptor that he really likes. And that's the play. Dig it into the hill. Are you kidding? That got away from him. But you know what? Next Better result than when he hit the basket last year for Ace and skipped OB. Also at eight under par, your co-leader <laughs> from Wichita, Kansas, Luke Humphrey. And this is gonna be awesome to watch Luke today. He has been practicing more than ever before. He says for the first time in his career, he's put serious effort into practice putting. And you can see that with 100% C2 putting in round one. And that's more what we're looking for. Hit the hillside, just dig in. Sometimes they trickle down to that wall. 2.50 p.m. tea time from Paxton, Massachusetts. Your co-leader at 8 under par, Nicholas Carl. My name is Nicholas Carl. I'm 27 years old and I'm from Paxton, Massachusetts. Matt Graham is the guy who introduced me into disc golf, and I instantly liked it because it had a competitive nature to it. I remember winning my first AM2 tournament, I think like two or three tournaments into my career, I won an AM2 one at my home course, and was instantly hooked. I had known Hannah Macbeth probably for the last 13 or 14 years, and then from that, obviously Paul Macbeth came into the situation, and him and I became friends, and Paul's given me countless opportunities to come out with him, share some time on the road with him, compete at these larger events, uh, practicing as much as I can, playing as many tournaments as I can, and doing a lot of content creation as well with my podcast and some YouTube videos with friends. I drove down to Virginia to hang out with Paul and Hannah, and Hannah was like, hey, we got an extra room in the basement. Why don't you move down with us? I went back home to Massachusetts, put in my two weeks at the current job that I had, and I moved down to Virginia to pursue disc golf. In the 2021 season, the biggest one that I played in was probably the World Championships out in Utah. And I started out in the B pool, ended up making the cut. I ended up finishing tied for 43rd, still lost by 30 strokes or something like that to James Conrad. But it was a really good time. And that's actually when Discraft had taken more of a notice in me. It kind of gave me an off season passion of, I need to really put in more time and effort into what I'm trying to do with my craft. A really happy feeling this week being here in Waco. I don't know why life has just been kind of treating me really good lately. You know, how you feel in your personal life is going to reflect how you do in your disc golf life. I've really dedicated a lot of time to practicing by myself actually. Go out before everyone else hit the course, play as slow as I could, just really figuring out every single hole. How do I get the birdie on this hole? How do I even get the par on this hole? 
I don't have the nerves of playing with any of the top pros in the world because I've played probably over a thousand practice rounds with Paul Macbeth. You could look at 90% of the field that's out there this week and you could realistically say that they're all better than me, they all throw further than me. So I think the nerves may potentially set in when I'm on hole one and I see the crowd and I kind of figure, okay, the cameras are rolling, I got Jomez there, I got the parents are gonna be watching this afternoon. I think all of that might kind of set in in a few hours, but right now I actually feel really good. I love this course. It's a course that doesn't require that 500 feet of power. I think I have a shot at winning this tournament. I'd be satisfied with top five at this point. I get to go out and actually play technical disc golf, which is how I grew up playing. So, it'll be a good time. Damn, top five, that'd be incredible. I mean, top 25 on tour these days is... Impossible. Yeah, it's almost impossible. And Nick going for the straight route? Like the skill, it almost caught edge and was parked. Okay, almost. That'll be a tester, nerf tester Rounding there. Your lead card action at the 2:50 p.m. tee time from Baltimore, Maryland. Sitting at six under par, Andrew Fish. I would be surprised if Fish doesn't go down the middle as well. It's a yeah. I was just gonna say yeah. I was just gonna say you really can tell the different styles by how they attack. Really, this first hole. I mean, it's some. In the past, you've gone up the middle, yeah. obviously, for sure. Mm -hmm. And Ooh. Fish is really good at just hitting those tiny windows, what? those lines, slow fading from left to right in the woods. Yeah, it feels more natural. It's, uh, it's what he's used to back home in Maryland. This is one you want to get. I mean, oh, yeah. I am surprised that they're not going with the Heiser because it was playing very easy. Mm -hmm. It was. The, the Heiser is... 2.46, so that's right there. Circle that one as a must-get. I mean, you can even throw it on the sidewalk and be fine like Paul here. <laughs> the way that Paul's playing, especially after last week's first two rounds averaging over 1,100 at the Memorial... I'd say that he's dialed in. Early season, did not play Las Vegas. Ah, Luke. It's a nervy miss there. But yeah, Paul's putts, you know, I feel like when he's dialed in, as we've seen for the last decade, when he feels comfortable, those little nervy putts that Luke just missed, it, it, there's no, there's zero hesitation. It's just obviously already made. He's already planning for the next shot, it almost seems like. And here's the next shot. Well, two par four, 631, out of bounds on the right there. That does come into play with some people who get it flat. Uh, just throw hyzer flip down the middle. I mean, I don't think these guys are gonna have big time problems with this tee shot, especially mm -hmm. today. Yeah, it's one of the easier uh, par fours on the course. You can miss it left and then have some trees in the way, but, I mean, it's a pretty big fairway to be able to manage, for sure. Very big gap. And the, the problem is when players try to bite off too much, turn the disc over and go into the Brazos River off to the right. But I've also, in some wind situations, I've seen people skip up the hill and left OB. But for the most part, this is what you're going to see from most of these guys. <laughs> that person said great shirt, not great shot. Both true. But both are true. That is sketchy. I think it's coming back in time. Oh, yeah. But that's, that's the close miss. That's the one that you're, if you want to get that distance, you bring that right side tree and you could kick OB. You'd be out of bounds, out of par save range. beats it fine and they're all gonna have little scramble opportunities uh -huh. at, plus the guys who are in the dead center the crowd this week here in waco texas is something to behold it is incredible no don't don't do that that wasn't supposed to happen that looks so good the flip roll. Oh, yikes. Tough break. That's going to be a nerf tester again here for Nick early. 
Let's see if Luke can give himself a short approach. Doubt this is going to be far away from the basket. He is very good at the touch sidearm mm -hmm. with that stable disc. 2018 amateur world champion from Charlotte, North. Well, he's not from Charlotte, North Carolina, but the world championships were in Charlotte that year. This is a tricky lie. That does need to get down. Yep. Yeah. Oh. oh, no, it's not in the bulls. Okay. Oh, oh, never mind. You need to sit. Okay. We're good. We're good. So Fish out driving Macbeth. Going with the turnover. It's. I mean, we bring it up every time we see him play, but uh -huh. just a complete ultimate background. You can see it yep. in everything that he does on the course. So smooth. So fun to watch. I know ah. for a fact I'm catching that if he threw that to me. Came in soft. Oh, Fish. Andrews. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's. Ooh. Okay. Engine. Old drama. I was already ready to say that it's just not even. Even this is going to be a little nervy. Yeah. I was just kind of trying to build it up. I he, didn't think he'd really miss. But, you know, it, like he said in his old monologue, it, you can be comfortable playing with the players, but it's the crowd, it's the cameras. It is just un you cannot uh you can't replicate that environment it's, in right. any practice there's nothing you can do there's no way to prepare yourself for the feelings you get it's a great sense of nerves but those nerves can relate to so many different outcomes and some people thrive in it and i'm not saying that he's not going to thrive in it he might turn things around and play great from here on out but it does tricky things and what it does to you is different for every person all three, par three, 320 feet. There's the wide left route, the straight, slightly wide right route, which most players are going to go with a fairway driver, backhand. And that's pretty much it. There's pretty much two routes. There is a wide hyzer when there's a right to left wind that I've, I've actually taken in the past, but we don't have that option. Sit down. Just because the wind is not as crazy as sometimes it gets. That's right where Paul was when he shot his 18 down. No spoilers. <laughs> yeah, it could, <laughs> could be today so far, the way he started. No. If you haven't watched that video, it is on Jomez, and you can watch that 18 under round, which was in 2019. And it's going to be easy for you to find as soon as you hit that subscribe button. You can <laughs> see all this stuff. Seriously, just go do it. Like, there's why not? Nice shot from Louie. Brady. Yeah, to address the, the nerves again, it, the best way to deal with it is do it again. Yeah, be put yourself here the next tournament. And you do that by doing exactly what he is doing. To get Figuring out him. how he plays his best. Not a good kick. That was a good shot. It really was. It was just, I mean, inches away from sliding up underneath the basket. So close. Figure out how you play good. Mm -hmm. Do it again. The crowd will be there. You'll feel the same. Yep. And you just learn how to deal with it. When I first came on tour... I was the absolute worst on lead card. I would go from I would go from lead card to last cash a, a mm. lot of times, mm -hmm. and it just took time. Yep. What about you? I used to be really good at it, and now I'm terrible again. Like I'm more nervous <laughs> now than I used to be, and it's I don't I don't know why. This guy, I've never seen him nervous. Ew. Literally, literally, that was like the most nervous I've ever seen him. He looks so stressed out. <laughs> I'd hate to play poker against him. Uh, goodness gracious, Mike. I mean, he's got a poker face at all times, which is surprising because when you play with him, he's actually pretty sociable. Oh, for sure. Very casual, but when it's time to throw his shot, he does it. One of my favorite people to play with. Nice birdie fish. I just fish. don't get to do it very often. <laughs> I know. It seemed like it was something we did quite a bit in the mid-2010s. <laughs> yeah. No, at that point, he was playing with me. There was a big difference there. Oh, that's a little flex. I like that. Thanks. He's won five world titles? Since then, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I haven't played with him since. 
but we both got AM World titles, so that's something that Paul came in second at. So take that, Paul Macbeth. Go back to 2007 and try again. Shout out to Greg Schwartz. Hole four, par four. 441 feet. <laughs> I wouldn't trade mine for five world titles. No way. You can't even if you try. <laughs> I got called out yesterday. I thought this was the shortest par four on tour, but there's actually one that's even shorter on this nine. But very difficult, very technical, very specific. You have to get around that corner. Otherwise, you can kiss your birdie chances goodbye. Too straight. Yeah, that's a... Well, we saw Kevin get up and down from there yesterday, so it's not impossible. Just improbable. Two inside. Maybe he'll get... Yeah, mm. that's nice. Um, that's going to take a... Super shot. That's the... Yeah, super shot. I don't want to say if it's a forehand or a backhand, but a super shot is exactly right. I don't know a lot of people who throw like Luke Humphreys, which is a rare thing these days. Usually, mm -hmm. with the, yeah, I would consider him a newer player to the tour just because... Yeah. You know, what, what year? 2018. 2018. And, and world now, champion. Now he's on lead card. Yep. But that form that he has is something like I've, I haven't seen a lot of. Maybe some people similar, but. He has a late lag. Yes. It's it's a very, it, it is quite unique to him. Nick is off early left, and this is where pars go to dive. There's really not much you can do to even get creative to save a par when you're early left or early right. Or even if you're in the middle of the fairway sometimes. Is he looking at the super shot? No. I. Th yeah, that's just the conservative. Yes. Get the circle two. Yeah, that's a good play. Anything more would be risking double bogey. I mean, an early tree kick could get you on that path left. and Yes. It's, he it's, has a look from there. I mean, that's... Mm -hmm. Edge of circle too, but that's such a scary putt to yeah. run. Yeah, with the Brazos right behind the basket, it's not green light. Is not it's it's yellow, turning red soon. Caution, it's flashing. Yellow. Yeah, it's flashing red. Maybe <laughs> doable from here as well, but lots of Yeesh. turn and lots of commitment. Otherwise, just pitch it to the corner, pitch it up, and get yeah. out. Die. He didn't. Oh. Okay, oh, gets away with it. If he doesn't hit those limbs, though, that mm -hmm. circles edge, and that's real nice. I think he runs that as well. He's been 100% in circle two. Why wouldn't you? No kidding. This is a scary stance because I've never seen him mess up doing this. <laughs> Seriously, he's the <laughs> yeah, best at this stance I've ever seen anybody, and it's not even close. Like back in the day, Will Schuster would do standstills yeah. better than anybody. Mm-hmm. Paul's back to the basket. It's like, why doesn't he just do that from the fair? <laughs> from the tee. <laughs> Off the tee. <laughs> <laughs> that was another great example. He's going to have a look for birdie. And Luke is human, folks. Good bit. Good height. And Nick, this is for the par? Or that's for the... That's for par. That was for par. So, I mean, good scramble to get to that point point. give himself an outside chance. But now he's got another tester for the bogey. Deep woods. I wonder if he's what he's got in there. There are little tiny. Oh, he's circles. Oh, yeah. It. Well, no, he's still five feet out. That's an awesome okay. birdie. Yes. Uh, that was full commit. So it was a super shot. He lined up the super shot. He executed, gave himself a birdie look, drilled it. He just makes it so casual. It's you anything know? but. Yeah, I, I, I've played enough with fish to know that he is. Very focused. He's taking his time. Paul just doesn't care. He's just going to birdie the next 474 holes in a row, I'm guessing. Just At the, the world prediction. world championships in 2014, he birdied, I think, 25 of the last 27 holes. I thought it was 26 of the last 27. May, that's possible with an eagle. I, yeah, I think it was 26 under in the, in the last 27 holes, but one of them was an eagle. Yep. And he needed every single one because it took him to the playoff with Ricky Wysocki and an incredibly epic playoff. Another video that you should go watch, but only if you're subscribed to Jomez. But you could do it if you're not subscribed to him. Hole 5, par 3, 264. Throw it into the bank with a backhand, skip it up to the right, and you're good to go. 
Some people like the sidearm. The high air shot, it seems to get it right, kind of filters to the left side or the right side. There are some low hanging limbs down the, uh, the center as well. More open space on the right half of the fairway. And Paul, that normally counter skips. It kind of does and just ends up <laughs> going straight. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't. His counter closer, yeah. and it's closer than it is. It's 18 feet. So that'll be another birdie for Paul. If this skips up the hill. Oh, yes, it does. And maybe, yeah, it should be manageable. Oh, yeah. Should it's be birdie. feet. Yeah, it is. It is interesting to watch somebody do something well in a way that you've never seen done. And we've seen so many different styles. Yeah. It is so rare that you come across something that is so blatantly different than the rest. Like, like Nicholas Carl. Like, that's a form that's just mm -hmm. a classic form. Classic. It's a classic yep. Massachusetts form. I bet you I could watch him <laughs> yeah. and I could pick where he's from. Yeah. Mm hmm. And good shot. He's going to have a look for his first birdie of the round, and that will ease some of the nerves if he can make that birdie. Sit. It's going to be a little high. A little work left, too. Luke's ready to get this round started as well. He's one under, but... That's a big putt. Yeah, there we go. Much needed putt. Now he can start clawing his way back. If he could stay around that or get back to that eight under round, like, you know, shoot an even par round. Very. Oh, oh no. Yeah. Uh, How? Howie. Mm hmm. It, you're saying if he can shoot eight under this no, round? No, no, no. If he could oh, just stay okay. at eight, that oh. could keep him. I think that would keep him in the top 25. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, two two more birdies so from here on out is and incredibly that's doable. And I feel like that's what you should be thinking. Obviously, you want to win. But well, he said he'd be happy with top five. So, but if you manage to just hold it together, mm -hmm. and then you're in the top twenty-five, you can get that top five with another good round like you did the first round. Just it's hard not to put that kind of pressure on yourself. It, just regardless of what happens from here on out, he shot eight under in the worst conditions we've played in in years. I'm not going to say ever, but for me, I can't remember a worse round to play in than yesterday. So oh, the fact that he sense. did that, I mean, he, he'll remember that round for a long time, I hope. I would. Hole six, par three, 267 feet, backhand turnover with a putter or a mid, or the forehand, which a lot of players will go with on this hole because it just fits the fairway, but not Paul. Paul's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean like for the round? No, oh. I just think he's perfect. <laughs> that's, that's how I interpreted it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> guy. Of course, he's 500 through five. I thought you were saying like he's like the fifth element, Mila Jovovich from the classic 90s movie. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> that's a deep cut callback i mean this is a massachusetts yeah. hole if i've ever oh, seen oh let's one. go nick beautiful you have to throw that up for an upshot at like five holes at maple hill that's right <laughs> that's right. All right also right up fish's alley as oh, well Oh, for sure he's got five discs in his bag that shape this fairway <laughs> right they just all go everything goes right yeah. 10 feet increments there we go farther. luke Showing off that there is a very good forehand line here. On lunch meet for him. He's on fire, man. Yeah. That Vegas play, I mean, 13 under final round. Here's the thing. If he Ooh. plays good at this tournament, he gets a top five finish. He will be like second in points. No, he might. He'll probably he'll be, be leading. leading. Yeah. Because Drew's not here. Yep. So he'll be leading. Yep. I mean, and Gannon, he beats Gannon. Oh, he's. He's playing. Paul wasn't playing Vegas. That's what I mean. Like, yeah. That's something you can tell your kids about. I'll tell my kids about it. Jeez. Wow. I There's no possible way <laughs> anybody listening makes that putt. Yeah. Because I know I wouldn't. 
cool, impressive par. Like you, you just, get your first par of the round, and we're like, oh, that was sick. Like we don't even care about his last birdie. It's a eighteen footer. Yeah. But it's in a way that you have to contort your body in a different. You don't practice that putt. You just have to feel it. And don't look now. Andrew Fish is four down through six, and he's got a missed putt from twenty feet, twenty three feet mm -hmm. in the last hole. That's uh getting it done. And look at that back to back birds. And look who's got the box. It's Nick Carl. Hole seven, par four, the shortest par four. I'm gonna stake my claim here. Shortest par four on tour. There are par threes on this course that are 160 feet longer than this hole. So definitely a short par four. But Next weekend yep. in Belton, yep. there's gonna be a par five that is shorter than this hole. They okay, might but it's change a par it. five. No, I think they were gonna change it this year to a par four. So. Okay, but either way, oh dang it! If it's a par four, <laughs> then it, I gotta dang it! I gotta take it back again. So I'm just I'm saving you here. All right, we're buds. I'm hooking you up. I'm not Get playing the Belton. Kick left. Oh yes, fights through. Nice. Take me fishing, fisherman. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody catches the reference on that one, type it in the comments. You are going to get a cookie and a gold star from me because that is a deep cut old inside joke from Paul and I, but it was on social media. Yes. Look Take. at these guys just peering it. Beautiful. Take me fishing, old man Fisher. Man. <laughs> God. All right. Great shot so far, Paul. Yep, that's a little high, but perfect actually. Just doesn't don't go too far left. Now. Yeah, that's tough. That becomes a forehand turnover, most likely. Maybe he can squeeze a jump putt through there with all the Twizzlers. That's what I've been calling them. Oh, and so I didn't catch your reference because you didn't like Twizzlers, right? In the practice round, you said something about that. Um. I don't like Twizzlers. Yeah. They're the little things that stick out and hit your disc and shoot them off into a big tree, and then that tree shoots you off into the deep woods. What about strawberry licorice? Well, there was a guy on my car today, on my card, pardon me, and nice. I was talking about the Twizzlers, and he goes, want some? And he pulls them out of his bag. And did you have one? Well, no, I don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> Luke with a good approach. And you're just going to make Give it. Me oh, it. off the cage. The dude is on fire, folks. Look at this. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it looks perfect. What a run. Paul going backhand. And, man, it just is so tight. You have to hold it. Early left on the inside part and wide right on the backside, and it's so tough to get the disc to swing in that motion in that little bit of space. So Paul in Nicholas, danger. Yeah, Nicholas scares it there. Yep. Tough over here. Lots of Twizzlers everywhere. Oh, Hall's going to... Clean. It gets through there clean. Oh, come on. We're, we're not going to talk about his missed putts from 20, I, 35 feet. Have you ever putted from over there? I have. Did you hit a Twizzler? No, I missed my putt tremendously, but I didn't hit a Twizzler. Oh, impressive. I got to give, <laughs> give a shout out. I mean, un, unreal shot. I'll never forget it. Aaron Gossage, folks. The dude has got a flipper of a forehand. And if you know what I mean... Thank you, because I don't. But he rips the disc. Took his drive, threw it sidearm. It landed right where Nick is tapping out from. Easiest, he just makes it. Easiest eagle I've ever seen in my life. Also, Chris Clemens also got the two. The crowd was so spectacular today. Just the energy from you all was just amazing. Oregon. 
hole eight, par three. Paul, walk us through this. Dude. Shortest hole on the course. <laughs> it actually 213 is. feet. I just dropped facts. Make sure I get them more right. I did a lot of research gotcha. last night. See what you're doing. Cool. 65 meters. Throw it dead straight. These guys are going to be throwing backhand. I think that Luke's probably going to throw a sidearm. That brings mm -hmm. the right side into play. Pulls it. Ah, the most fishy of the fisherman holes. And he hits early tree, and it's going to be scramble mode now. You got a five-foot gap. Throw a putter as straight as a string, and you're fine. Luke going with his A3, a little bit of Anheuser, and sit. just going to come up just oh, a little bit short. That's, eh, that's a tough putt. You have to work for it. Another Massachusetts hole. Let's see if he can uh -huh. harness that. Harness complete. That is going to be a tap-in. Don't Sit down. Look, okay, don't look yeah. now, but that's going to get him back to eight under. Oh, yeah. Nice, Nick. Good run here. He's like, I'm not only going to eight under. I'm going to go to nine, then 10, then 11, then 12. Then Paul's like, I'm at 25. So. And Paul's doing a good job of getting himself in position to get back on that birdie I like, streak. Yeah, I like that Paul takes that with a little bit of hyzer, and he doesn't even test going deep you know what i mean sure. out of all the shots like his is the more controlled shot down there drifts it to the left side no chance for anything but a 20 footer that's something that a lot of people don't notice i feel like and that's a good putt from luke and you that was a good angle to see how much slope there is behind the basket if you miss a putt i don't care where you are on the screen if you miss a putt on the screen it's gonna take you to 25 feet and you very rarely ever just sit right by the pin. I also think it's hilarious that people just think that we're just going to throw it to a tailwind side like it's that easy. Like, why'd you leave yourself a headwind? And that's and that's a level above what these guys are doing mm -hmm. is they are able to do that. Like, I legitimately believe that Paul meant to throw that little hyzer, to yep. not throw it flat, and that's just really yeah. smart disc golf. But in order to play really smart disc golf, you have to have complete control. So very impressive from Paul. Hole nine is a par four. It is 519 feet. And it feels like a par four if you miss every single one of these trees and you get your drive down to this grassy area. If you don't do that, it feels like the par five that it used to be called. But it's just 150 feet maybe 170 feet from that grassy area to the pin. So, I mean, it really does, it is a par four, but it's just a brutal one. And you said yesterday, it's one of the top five, top five tightest tee shots on tour. Yeah, it's probably top, probably the top five tee shots to get into position yep. to even have a shot. Like you'll be able to scramble and get looks from 30 feet, whatever. But to get in the perfect position, you're going down a super tight, well, one of the, top five tightest fairways we got mm -hmm. into one of the smallest landing zones we got for that perfect spot. And, and and to elaborate on that just a bit more, you look at the fairway, the size of the fairway isn't necessarily even fair to, as Paul's drive just barely misses, you, you, the window for a successful shot is about two to three feet wide. Yes. If you get outside of that three feet, three foot range that you're aiming, you will not hit your line. There's another tree in the way. You can get lucky. Right. Like you can get lucky and get some and go left side and miss all the trees. But the, what we're trying to do is throw it down that fat fairway on the right. If you want to see the best tee shot you'll ever see on it with a backhand, just go back to yesterday's coverage and watch Kevin Jones. What is Paul doing here? Through a sky roller. He was. What? No. No, he was in bogey, maybe double bogey range. You can't just pull out a backhand roller like that. And just <laughs> Fish is like, I can do that. If Paul can do it, I can <laughs> do it. <laughs> what a shot. What a beautiful angle to capture. Where did he go? No one knows. No, Jomans yeah. doesn't know. I don't know. You don't know. No clue. And Luke, this is a weird place to be because you can't really get that aggressive for the pin. But you don't want to just throw a 100-foot shot either. So it's what do you do? You just kind of pitch it around the corner. 
And Nick at least has an outside chance to get to the green, but that was way too tight, and he's kind of lucky even to roll back out to the middle. Yes. Ah, uh, might be a bad break because he's he likes to throw the back in. Mm, good so point. It could be tuck there. Back to what I was saying. There was a story. I, I was playing with Macbeth. It was really windy. He threw a shot. I threw a shot, and he said, yeah, I just wanted to make sure to get to the tailwind side. Mm. And I remember in the conditions, I was only thinking to make it somewhere near the circle. I didn't care. Mm -hmm. I was just trying to get down the fairway. He threw the shot. He left him a tailwind putt. I threw my shot. I got in the circle. I didn't have a tailwind putt. But in that moment, I realized, like, this guy's on another level than I, I am right now. We're on the lead card. <laughs> like, he's trying to get the easiest putt ever. I'm just trying to get a putt. And that's kind of what I was trying to relay to you guys is this guy is he's a chess player and he's a couple moves ahead. Yeah, I'd say a couple is an understatement. I mean, he even played for that route there on the green just to stop his disc. And that's incredible stuff because you can't see that from where he is. He's he already mapped he throwing it in the topography the of the ground yep. and he knows every route. True. He knew he was going to throw roar and. <laughs> yeah, that was a crazy shot. It's there's no really good way to show how much trouble Paul was in with his lie, but just take our word for it. That was an insanely good shot. Yeah, we're not getting up and down from there. Nope. And Nick's gonna have to make. A you nice might with putt. a thumber or something, but I have no chance. Kevin Jones birdied it today with the uh, what I like to call a Cajones shot. My new nickname for Kevin Jones when he does Finn. crazy stuff. What a look from Fish. Yeah, that was par, I think. And he was scrambling for a while. Yes, that was for and a, par. A good par save for Nick. So way to turn around the second half of this front nine for Nick. Great par. Mm -hmm. Fish with that great streak, he's going to end it as long as he makes this. Not a bad bogey. A double, double bogey. Oh, dang. dang it, we missed it. I was blabbing about Paul being great. Yep. I, it's funny because I actually have a, another thing to say about Paul, about how he's the next step. He's a step past wherever you think he is. We were giving him a hard time one time about fluttering his putts. And then he was like, yeah, I flutter my putts because in the wind, the disc or the basket catches a fluttery putt better. <laughs> and we were like making fun of him. But then he like won the tournament with a fluttery putt in the wind. We we're like, gosh, dang it, Paul, you did it again. <laughs> so it's Paul McBeth. His lead now is two over Luke, who scrambled his way, stayed in the mix. A little bit of work there from Chris Dickerson. I think flurry putts are stupid. I'll just say it. <laughs> so I don't care if he won the tournament. <laughs> it looks stupid. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, thank you to our Founders Club. These guys are subscribed for Jomez, but are you? Hit that subscribe button. I'm not going to say it again in round three. Ring and, that bell. Yeah, I mean, the bell's even more helpful but just the subscribe is enough thank you so much that's it for round two front nine we are officially halfway through the event back nine is coming right up get that flutter out baby